Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing well. Today you join me on a very busy Barrow Beach. We're down here because I'm with Josh who drives for Barrow Motors and he's just bought a car that I'm actually very jealous of and especially the price that he's got it for, so let's see what he's bought. This is Josh's very cool 1990 Mercedes 190E. And this is a one owner car from new. Josh would be the second owner ever. And how much do you pay for this beast, Josh? I paid a whopping 350 pounds for this car. 350 quid. So did you rip off some old people for this? No, of course not. I was, uh, I was very respectful in the, uh, the purchase of this vehicle. There's no riffing, riffing off going on here. Uh, yes, I got this uh, a lot cheaper than this car is worth. Um, we, we were all very jealous when we heard that Josh had bought this. What a cool looking car. So basically the people who were selling this were friends of your dad or colleagues? Not yeah, colleagues. They, were, they were clients of my dad. Uh, my dad's an estate agent, he sold that house uh, a few times. Um, so they always known us. Um, they expressed an interest in selling it a few years back. Um, I had a mate of mine who drove a 190E, his had recently broken down, he was interested in buying it. Didn't go through in the end for whatever reason. Um, anyway, my dad saw them recently. Uh, they informed us that they had tried to sell the car recently for only 500 pounds. Uh, the chap that came to look at it said no because of, if you have a look at this here, there's some wear on the, on the driver's door card. They said no to 500 pounds for this car because of that. So they got in contact with us and said, well, we've struggled selling it. We're not driving it anymore. If you still want to have it, come have a look at it. We'll, only sell, we'll sell it to you for 200 pounds. So uh, naturally, I uh, drove straight over there, had a look around the car, uh, spoke to them about it. It's one owner from new. They got extensive service history on it. They've really looked after this thing. They've absolutely loved it. Um, and I spoke to them and I said, well, quite frankly, if you want to sell it to me for 200 pounds, I'll take it. But this thing's worth more than that. So I first, I offered to help them sell it. I could list it on uh, the marketplace for them and I would just take a percentage of the, uh, the sale value. Um, True and, entrepreneur. Yeah, proper entrepreneur, a businessman, me. With a heart. Um, and I said to them, well, if, yeah, if they want help selling it, I'll help them sell it, I'll take a percentage. If they want me to buy it, I'll buy it. Um, they got back to me a week later, they said, we'd like you to own the car. Um, would you be willing to pay £350 for it? Naturally, I was there within the hour, and uh, here she is. What a beauty. That's just one of those things, that a stroke of luck where you get offered something. I've probably, well, I don't think I've ever had anyone quite that good, but it's just, you, you know, perhaps like in your this scenario, you've got old folks, they know that you're a young guy into cars and they've offered it to you. You've been genuine with them and said you would help them sell it, but, you know, they probably don't need the money. They love the car, it's one owner, it's on 200,000 miles, or even more in fact. Yeah, 211. That, that they've put on it themselves entirely, as yeah. they're the only owners that have it's ever the had only it. the owners from this car. The um, service history, by the sounds of it, stacked about as high as the car. It's extensive. I just wanted it to go to someone who would actually be enthusiastic about it, and I just think that's really cool. And now you're gonna sell it for a massive profit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Forget yeah, all that, well, that nice, nice, yeah, as I said, they did. They wanted to sell it to me, which is which is sweet. But when I picked it up, he did say, "Well, we'd like it to go to you." But realistically, if you do sell it, as long as you make a profit off it, we're still happy. Um, That's nice, which isn't it? is very Leave, sweet to leaving them. something in it for the next man to make a little profit. They know that it's gone somewhere nice. It's not going to get strapped, uh, scrapped even, or stripped for parts or whatever. So let's have a little look around it objectively, because it's not perfect, is it? 30, 33 years old, it's not going to be perfect. No, it's got a little scuff down here, but I reckon you get the guys to do a little bit of a... You should get Jordan to do a little paint repair type thing on there. Get Jordy on it. It's not bad, is it? It's so good. A little dust of paint over those wheel trims, I reckon, as well. Yeah. You could have this looking like minty fresh. There's a few little scuffs on here. Yeah, the corners, the corners have been yeah. they've touched a few edges. Is, it, is that the original plate or is that it a private plate? the original uh, plate, yeah. Is it really? H-Reg, 1990. Yeah, you got hugged. hugged. Yeah, it had a private plate on it most of its life. This is the standard one's gone back on. I feel like we should have a little day of titivating before you do sell this. Just paint up the wheel trims. You've got to just leave the centre section. We'll try and speak to panel shop, see if we can get a matching colour for that. Just 
scotch it back. A little bit of filler there, Clean maybe. Up a little bit. I wonder Do a little because this is actually plastic bumpers, isn't it? It's not painted, is it? You can probably yeah, do a so bit of heat repair or something. Oh, maybe it is painted, I don't know. But yeah, you think you heat that up? It's, sort of it is minty fresh, isn't it, for the age? Th what you say? It's 33 years old. 33 years old. 211,000 miles. And it's so cool in here. And it's got that classic car smell as well, which I love. Yeah, it's amazing how good the air condition is. We can't see anything, I don't think, because of the sun being the wrong way around. Is that an original Blaupunkt stereo, do you reckon? Um, I think it is the original. It doesn't, well, it works. It's a bit crackly. A, it was, a, it's got Blaupunkt speakers in the, uh, in the parcel shelf. And it's a world is the, uh, is the, the factory made first day kit in there? I believe so. Is it? Yeah, I believe so. Prove it. Oh. No way. I'm not sure you want to rely on it after 33 years. Yeah, I don't you? know how much I trust it, but I mean, it's sterile, sterile, I guess. It looks like it's there. That's cool, isn't it? We've got an armrest in the back. Armrest in the front. Do you know what I really like about this? What? More Tell than me. the story, which is cool enough in itself, is that it is standard. How many of these are out there that are on rims and lowered? And were well, you tempted to do that though? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I, I've looked. I mean, it would look cool with a Cosworth kit on it. Yes, yeah, so I've I've already had a look how much a Cosworth kit was. I've had a look at wheels. I've had a look at everything. But no, there is a there's a natural beauty to this car in its current form. And but you wonder. just feel like a like proper businessman of the late eighties, early nineties, driving around that. That was peak, like. Not quite peak, but you know, you'd made it rolling around that bad boy, especially with the badge on the front, just poking out the top. Can we pop the bonnet, Josh, and have a quick look at the engines? Yes, we can. <sighs> look at that. Looks like it's from 1990, doesn't it? That could do with a little paint up as well, couldn't it, Josh? Could do with a little bit of love. Just to freshen it up. I like how the ABS pump has got ABS emblazoned on it, like it was. You know, it probably was revolutionary technology at the time. Head gasket, not head gasket, sorry. Rocker, uh, cover. rocker cover gasket, as you were saying. Might have a bit of a weep going on, but that'd be a pretty simple fix, wouldn't it? Oh, it's really easy on these. Eight bolts and a 26 pound part. Yeah. But I do like that it's got a gas strut to hold the bonnet up from factory. Yeah. Back in the day as well. And not only does it, does it do this, but oh, it's got a latch. little pin up. Oh yeah, it goes full open. And she goes all the way For up. working on it. That is cool. And everything's still got, everything's written in German, basically. Vorsicht, Unterdruck Kühl System. I can tell you that means cooling system. I don't know about the rest. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all well and good that it looks good and whatever. Should we um, take it for a spin, see how it drives? I like the idea. Why does my uh, seatbelt say RS on it? Because it's a race car. Race spec. Um, no, restraint system, I assume. Uh huh. That's very German and sensible, isn't it? Make sure you know what it is. It definitely attracts a, like you know a few looks, doesn't it? Oh, people love this car. I've only driven it on the road a few times, and there's a fair few people shout, "Nice car!" Yeah. People love it. He loves it. Yeah, the old boys. The, the old boys do love it. They got a beard. They're gonna like this car. That's naturally. Yeah. White beard, at least. Any beard, I think. If it's, a, if it's a white beard, it's an older gentleman who appreciates that this was a, a classy automobile in its time. And if you've got a, a non grey beard, then you're probably a hipster, and therefore you also think it's cool. That that checks out. Yeah, yeah. that's logic. My mate that drives these, yeah, exactly. He's bearded, I imagine. He's got a, he's got a sticker beard. that says yeah, something yeah. about having a beard. He wears t shirts like Beard Life. Yeah, growing his hair out, hipster beards, little moustache going. Apparently hitting puberty is like a fashion choice these days. Yeah, this is a proper little four-speed auto. Um, and apparently, I was, I was chatting to my mate that owns it yesterday, if you, if you have an eco mode, it doesn't even use first. So it's basically a really? four-speed. Really? So, yeah, I mean, a lot of autos just roll off in second, to be fair. If you pop it in sport, she uses first. It drives nice. Launch control, or? <laughs> Don't think respect on this option, no. I... No. Are you sure it's a talk about auto? So, so can, wouldn't, uh, th this would have been, I don't know, was this pre-AMG days? 
it was Cosworth, wasn't it? They made the yeah, movies. Yeah, because the Cosworth version of this, I don't know if AMG was also a thing. I don't know, I don't know much about Mercedes history, to be honest with you. No, I, I, do you know what? I've never really, I was previously never a huge Mercedes fan. It's only like as I've got a bit older, and maybe some of the newer versions have come out, I've really started to appreciate them. Like this now is kind of retro enough that it feels cool, but I've always hated the kind of really square, bland steering wheels. Like it's your, it's your tactile connection to the car, and I just always found they're really they're a bit basic. boring. I mean, yeah. even now, I feel like I don't know. You wouldn't want to change it, would you? Because it's the original for the car, but there could be something cooler for this, surely. Yeah. It's cool now because of its age and because it's classic, but... Yeah. But in like the last, let's say the last 10 years, since about 2013 onwards, when, is that about when they started making the A-Class? And I guess they just took a Renault really, didn't they? But they just started doing interior styling, it was really cool. It made a massive change to very modern yeah. F1 inspiration everywhere and whatever and yeah. Yeah, well, everyone says now. Mercedes is a is a luxury car brand trying to be sporty. Beam is a sporty car brand trying to be luxury. I've I never think. heard that before. Oh, really? Every day is a school day when you're with Josh. No, I've always I've always preferred Beamers, but I mean, looking at the new cars that are coming out from BMW, I think I always preferred Beamers when I was a young, skinny whippersnapper, and I wanted something sporty, bruv. But now I prefer. The luxury. Mercedes just for quality or Audi for comfort. Like Audi's a super comfortable. Uh, considering the traffic's that bad that way, I think we'll go left. Go go, go. Take it through the lanes. The thing I have noticed is I have not seen the mileage gauge move in the time. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, so for the record, we're on 211. It's on the edge of 663. And I notice your speedo gauge bounces a little, doesn't it? Oh, under 20, yeah, the, uh, whatever they. Whatever sensor systems they had back in the day to measure speed does cable. not work it would be cable. under 20. Over 20 is fine, no more bounce. Uh, yeah, a little bit bounce. So it's solid, kind of solidified itself. Man. But um, yeah, low speeds, not, it's not what it's built for. No aircon, is there? Which is why we've got the windows open. So yeah, is that alright for uh, audio? Yeah, Just straight yeah, it'll be good, it'll be good. Yeah, straight over. Smoother, isn't it? So is it a six cylinder? No, this is four a cylinder. two litre four cylinder petrol. Okay. Uh, they could come with a six cylinder. Uh, one of my mates owns the 2.6 four cylinder. He bought that yeah. for about six and a half grand. They they hold, they hold good money. Um, whereas this thing, four cylinder, two, li two litre petrol. Still cool, super desirable. I guess they did these in a manual as well, didn't they? I guess they would have done them. So. I assume so. I've not seen one. They're very no, common. No, they'd be more auto. desirable or not. I guess Back so. in the day, I think the auto was the, was the luxury thing, wasn't it? So yeah, but then tech. everyone's got this stigma against also, haven't they? Got to be manual, driver's car. I mean, yeah. to be fair, old autos uh, did used to be pretty horrendous. You know, sap all the power out of it, sap all the fuel economy out of it, and they just felt dangerous. You go to put your foot down, and it would take about three working days to make a decision on whether it was going to drop a gear or not. Oh well, mate, you let Johnny Bravo. No, he doesn't mind. Doesn't mind okay, Bravo. no, all right, don't worry, mate. All good. Don't want to be on camera. But yeah, I mean, for for a 33 year old auto gearbox, it's all right. It's pretty smooth. It, it's smooth at low speeds. When you when you're going for it, it, it does chuck it through the gear, especially in sports mode. But squeaky brakes, Josh. Very squeaky brakes. I don't know if that means any doing. I'm gonna have I'll have to do an inspection of the brakes. Have to look at the rock cover gas. Yeah, I mean, it's a service. Been serviced very regularly throughout its life, but it's not been driven much in the last few years. I do like this, must have been an early feature like the economy gauge. Uh, the economy gauge, as soon as I put my foot down, it goes all the way down. But, very much like the BMW ones. Yeah, I like it. And then the, the, the oil pressure gauge as well is not really something you see anymore. You only really get a, a light when it hits, oh, yeah, hits zero. Yeah, yeah. This is a proper gauge, which I like. It's a cool little car, this. It is cool. Yeah. But it's held up well, like the dash isn't cracked or anything like that. It's good condition. Like where the driver touches when they drive, so this little armrest and this armrest have shown yeah. shown where the steering wheel looks brand new. Yeah. Everything else is is mint. It's just those little bits. Got a uh, little cassette player down here, you put all your different um oh, cassettes the, in, which yeah, is really cool. So I just love that it's like original. Everything's original down to the radio and everything. She's mint. Should we open the sunroof or? 
the sunroof doesn't work. Oh. That's one of the things that are, that they mentioned didn't work on this car when I bought it. One of few... And you gave 350 quid for this? I know, right? Rip off. You got I should have gone for 200 quid. Honestly. Well, yeah, it's that is the thing with these cars. They The sunroofs do give up. And uh, apparently finding someone who knows how to fix them is uh, a bit of a challenge these days with it being 33 year old tech. Yeah. Um, which is, which will bring the value it's down actually quite an, It's still a neat thing, it doesn't really stand out. But it's not like, oh. It's like, it's, it looks, it's not like it's yeah. folded cloth or something that goes back, it just. It, it's you know. flush, it looks proper. Do you know what, it's super comfortable in here, isn't it? Really nice. It's really you nice. You could definitely do a long journey in this thing. Has it got cruise control? It hasn't. Um, I've seen them with it, we'll but right I don't here. think it's. Uh, factory in this one anyway and you got a right hand indicator as well yeah everything's on the one stalk yeah well that's typically jesus pal get the fuck over <laughs> we almost wrote it off on a bus everyone's in the middle of the road middle of the bus as well we got cameras yeah typically mercedes to have everything on one stalk but it's normally on the left but i guess this oh, is no, it's that's a good point it makes normally they're on the left right. obviously japanese stuff used to be on the right and it, old british stuff i guess it's maybe of that era where it was on the right. It makes more sense to have on the right because, well, you wouldn't in this being an automatic, but I always say like the old British stuff and Japanese stuff, you can indicate with your right hand while changing gear, going around a corner, so you indicate for the corner, you can change down the gear all at the same time. And I'm sure that's not 10 to two proper driving instructor, you know. Yeah, this makes sense to me. Etiquette, but. <laughs> yeah, this, I would prefer this setup. 100% if you could, you know, get that in a modern car. I don't know why it didn't stay a thing. I mean, is it still a thing in Mercedes? It's still on one stalk usually, yeah. Okay. Maybe they patented it or something. The only usual time you've got another stalk is on the right-hand side if it's a selector for gears, and then oh, yeah. uh, potentially a second left-hand selector for cruise control. Yeah, that, that, that 7 buttons, Series we drove, four, four um, stalks around the steering wheel, I was like, what the fuck do all these things do? Yeah. It's as simple, it's all in one. Yeah. Do you know if they've done any sort of like, long journeys in this, to kind of rack up that mileage? I suppose over 33 years, it's not high mileage, but... No, I mean, that's that's a really low mileage on a yearly basis, you need 33 years, yeah, yeah, 200,000 miles. Yeah, you're supposed to be 333, you know, an average of 10 to 12 and a half or something. Yeah, I think this has always been the one of two or three cars they've owned. Um, it was, it was, the, this is an old couple that owned this. Uh, it was the wife's, she's had it since brand new. It was her little baby. Yeah. Um, and I think they had talked about driving it to Europe or something like that throughout the years, but I don't, I don't know them all that well, to be honest with you. I don't really know the history of the car too much, no. but you can tell they've, they've loved this thing. And they've, yeah. They've enjoyed it. It rocks a bit. Suspension's a bit soft in this car. <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh. Which is uh. Well, that's what you expect, isn't it? It's that's boat. Exactly. It's got proper, proper cruise ship comfort. But cruise ship handling goes with it. Although to be fair, I say that. Uh, I go right. right. It handles right hand corners. I got to say. You do get on two wheels, but those two wheels work well. So despite having thoughts of potentially uh, kind of resto modding this, you're probably going to sell it. I think it's, yeah, it's a difficult decision. Um, I would... It's one of those difficult, isn't it? When you've got something so cheap, it's like, oh, it hasn't cost me anything really. It hasn't cost me anything. On so the other hand, the upside, you could, could... I could make a lot of money off it. It's now one of three cars I own, uh, one of which is already sat in the garage, rotting away. Yeah. So I think keeping it, there's potential, it could be really cool, it didn't cost me much, it could make a really cool show car or something like that. But realistically, there's a lot of profit in it. And being, well, a student or just having finished a degree, I've not got any money. So yeah. uh, the nice uh, two and a half grand, whatever profit that sat in this car, I, uh, I wouldn't mind having that in my pocket, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's fair enough, isn't it? I guess that money could pay to like fix up your E36 or whatever. Yeah, it's it would be money towards or the just, project. Or just get so. wasted on E36. Yeah, it would get chucked into the car that we How much could you money. get for your E36? That's the question. I mean, so as soon as I bought this, as my dad was saying, well, why don't you just sell the Beamer and why don't you keep this? Like, you didn't pay much money for it. It's worth way more money. It's in better condition, all this. I'm like, yeah, but I've owned the Beamer for like three years now and it's it cranks now. But it doesn't run. 
I wasn't going to go all the way in. I just, no, I just, this has never been open before. Just but pull up here and you can get in. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, the Beamer's worth a lot more than I pay for it as well. I have done all right with these cars throughout the years. Um, so the temptation is there to sell that. Garage this. Um, Let Josh know in the comments. Yeah, well, no, what would you guys do? Josh's terrible local geography. I've now got to drive out of a, uh, the wrong the way. Grass. I could go over the grass. Let's go over the grass, put it off road and see what it's capable of. Mm, so that's quite rude, but let's just do it. Send on. It also four wheel drives. Not four wheel drives. Right. She's an off roader. Limitless capabilities. Go on, buy it off me. I would love to, but again, I don't know. I do like it, but. You know the how money much I, you want for it, yeah, you know which is fair, it, what so. you want for it, but now that I know that you've got it really cheap, I'm just bitter. Yeah. You could buy it for, for what it's worth and you'd have a great car out of it, but you'd know how much profit I made on it. Yeah, you'd, you'd, uh, I guess if I saw this online, I think it was really cool for, uh, you know, whatever it's worth, 27, 2753, I don't know. Yeah, I've had a lot of But would I go out and buy it? I'd, be, I'd look at it and be like, that's cool. I don't know if I'd buy it. If I saw it for 350 quid, I would have shat myself. Oh yeah. And you know, ran out the door without shoes on to get that's, it. But. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I did. I mean, I texted you saying, "Joe, can I borrow some trade plates to pick this thing up?" And then what? I thought, well, fuck it, I'll just go straight away. And I was like, just yes, go because it. I'm an enabler. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You wouldn't say no to this kind of thing. Of course, you've got to have it. Make a great YouTuber out of it too. I reckon it might want some shocks. Yeah on the front yeah and uh, what so with a little bit well, like uh, yeah we, we we need to have a little if you want to see like a follow-up video where we kind of i feel like we should get this in the workshop maybe on a saturday after work or something and we will i, I could do some touching up on the you know we could make it minters as minters as we can get it like maybe that, rope yeah. jordan into uh doing some touch up bits and pieces yeah, we could sort the uh, rock the cover gasket out do a service i'll sort the wheel trims and bits out and what else are we gonna do? Oh, let's have a look at the shocks and things like that because it's it's just a little bit bouncy in the front. That might be what they're like, but and now on this on the smooth, you can't really notice anything. But just going over those little bumps there, you just get that feeling of there's a bounce to it. Yeah, yeah. That might be what it's like. Again, let us know in the comments. That might be what it's like. I don't know, but something so retro feeling about the like finger knurls in the back of the steering wheel as well. All the way around. It's oh. really like hold it wherever you want. And you By the on. way. Just so you, your shoulders can get rammed as well. I was prepared. Yeah, it does. It does rock a bit, though, does it? But those back seats are like anyone's ever used them. So I can confirm that we are still on two hundred and seven thousand six hundred and sixty-three miles. So. This could actually be on 330,000 miles for all we know. You should get in touch with it. It'd be interesting to look at the uh, MOT history and see. Yeah, it's not really gone up very much in the last five years. It's gone up. If it was, as long as it's gone up somewhat, I imagine it's something to do with the speedo cable. So again, we could check that out. Yeah, because I Because if the speedo cable's bouncing like that, it's probably going to be run off the same and cable the, that, for the, the mileage. The bouncy speedo cable is normal on these, apparently. The what? The, they bounce under 20 mile an hour is normal for these. Oh, that's normal. Oh, okay. They used to sense the speed is just inaccurate at low speeds. But yeah, I noticed I tried to reset that um, the bottom counter, the trip counter. That's Frankly, on. the sunroof doesn't work and the mileage is potentially wrong. You have been mugged off, Josh. Damn right. Well, arguably, the mileage counter not working, it means that it's only going to hold value. Yeah. Is that so, uh, yeah, I mean, there is that. It's like it's like a old school mileage blocker. Yeah, they need to wind it backwards if it never winds up. Yeah, hundred percent. Save your drill power. I might ask him how long it's been sat like that. I don't well, you, all you got to do is look at the MOT history, I guess, haven't you, and see whether like, if it's been on that for more than one year. It could just be the last year, in which case something's just seized up, probably. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that they're selling it because they've not driven it very much for the last year or so. They take it out twice a month, they said. Um, which would understand why she has seized up a little bit. But... 
you know what's really sad is I'm going to get out of this now and get into Sophie's 2016 A-Class, which is essentially a Renault Clio, and I hate it with a passion. So there we have it, guys. That was uh, Josh's 350-pound E190E. I'm very jealous. He's very smug. He's feeling slightly less smug now that he, we might have just discovered that it may have been on the same mileage for the last 11 years on the MT. Uh, but it hasn't really been driven in those years either. So at least, you know, we now know that that's one more thing he's going to have to fix potentially. But still, what a bargain. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, check Josh out on Instagram. He is that underscore broken underscore bimmer with an I. I'll put it here anyway. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, let me know. If you want to see a follow-up video where we do a bit of titivating on this thing, then uh, let us know. We'll try and make that happen. And uh, yeah, if you're new here, please do subscribe. If you're not, thank you for continuing to watch. From Josh, goodbye. <laughs>